Hello, we're back with the second episode of the Let's Draw Nature series. This time, we're focusing on the little Anna's hummingbird. I love these small birds so much. How are they even real? After doing some research on these birds, there's so much fun, intriguing stuff that I learned about them. Join me as I share my findings and draw this bird. Here are some reference images I wanted to start with. I started off with a screenshot of some footage I took of a hummingbird sipping nectar from a Mexican bush sage. I have additional references of the hummingbird pose I wanted to draw, with a hummingbird mid-flight with its wings visible. When you see these pictures of hummingbirds with their wings in full detail, it's kind of wild to think that the camera was able to capture that because Anna's hummingbirds beat their wings about 40 to 50 times per second. Another thought I had going into this painting was that I wanted to play with the colors a bit. Anna's hummingbird has a beautiful iridescent pink magenta colored throat patch, also known as gorget. You can see the iridescence of the throat patch catching the sunlight here and really shining. There's some green, pink, and almost blue shades in this reference photo that I want to play with. Okay, let's get started. This time, I wanted to start off with a sketch, because I wanted an idea of what the final drawing would look like. I still want to use the technique I used before, of blocking colors in and not using line art. I like the blocky art style and being able to see brush strokes. As I'm sketching the bird out, let's talk about the hummingbird. Again, how are they even real? Let's talk about their ecological niche, which is the role that hummingbirds play in the ecosystem. Hummingbirds are nectarivores, hopefully I said that right, animals that mainly have a diet of nectar, which is produced by flowers. Hummingbirds help pollinate flowers and eat the occasional insect as well. The way their body has adapted for this lifestyle of fast flower juice drinker is pretty wild. Their long beaks and tongues are elongated for sipping nectar. Their wings are built for fast flapping. Their legs are so small that they can't even walk anymore, just to perch and scoot along branches, and for some scritches. And to fuel their fast-paced lifestyle, they need this constant intake of nectar, which is mainly made of sugar. These birds are literally fueled by sugar and visit hundreds of flowers every day just so they can eat enough to survive. So wild. Alright, so I started to add color taking color from my reference images and building up layers starting from the base. This is one of the times where I'm midway applying colors and looking at the canvas and being like, what the heck am I even doing? But once I started layering on some colors and working on the head, things came together. I think it's once I start adding details to the head, it helps me get a better idea of how this painting is coming together. One thing that came to mind when I was coloring this hummingbird was noticing the feather patterns. It was fascinating to see how these feathers on these hummingbirds looked almost like scales. They're so uniform and round. When you look up close to a hummingbird's feathers, the texture is crazy. Since hummingbirds are so small already, it's so much easier to see the structure of the feathers while you look at a portrait picture of a hummingbird. As for their iridescent feathers, which almost seem to glow an unnatural color, I learned that the iridescence is caused by the way the light reflects off the feather structure, not the actual color or pigment of the feather. Apparently, the feathers are covered in a thin layer of clear cells that reflect the light in a certain way, like a prism. These feathers contain microscopic air bubbles that allow the reflected light to shine. So cool. Oh, 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 oh,
happy with how the bird came out. Now I want to draw a simple background with the Mexican bush sage flower stalks. I had a moment in October where I got to capture this footage of hummingbirds zipping from flower to flower and I was able to get a close view of them. It felt almost magical and it's something that I'll think about for a while. I was reminded of that moment as I drew out the shapes of the purple and white sage flowers. I used the pink highlight as the white flower as it is the lightest shade I want to have in this painting. It'll make the flower and bird painting more cohesive. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this piece. I'm still learning how to use colors, and it's been helpful to draw colors from the reference photos. I think for next time, I'd want to figure out how to use the colors better, like the blue, to be reflected in parts of the picture, and learn how to make these colors pop even more. I love learning more about Anna's hummingbird, and I hope you enjoyed this as well. Thanks for watching!